This video reviews options you have available when selecting invoices to pay. The Check Processing screen has a cash requirements report, by vendor or by job, that will list the invoices available to pay through a specific due date. This report will also show any invoices that are selected to hold, either through the check processing screen or through the invoice itself. And you can see I have one here. What the hold does is it removes this invoice from some of the select all routines that you can utilize in the check processing. So you would have to take one more step in order to pay the invoice. It'd have to be taken off hold before it can be selected to pay. The cash requirements totals will show everything due through the date selected, but it will then give you a released amount to pay, which will exclude anything that is on hold. It also displays unused credits, so you don't forget to take a credit you may have with a vendor. So a couple ways you can go into the select invoices and print checks. The main option is the select invoices and print checks, which will update a few things on the way in, including the amount to pay by taking the total invoice amount minus any retainage, discounts, or previous payments, giving you your new amount to pay. It will refresh warnings, which can then be viewed by the warnings button at the top. And anytime you can see warnings, you also have the sub worksheet available to print or email directly to the vendor. It will also update any joint vendors that have been added to the invoice itself. There are a few items that can be changed directly on this screen as well. For instance, you can do partial payments by simply changing the amount to pay. If I decide I'm only paying Austin Plumbing 50000 of this $116,000 invoice, I simply change the amount. And when I select the invoice to pay, this is the dollar amount that will display on the check. If I were to leave this screen and come back in to pay without paying that check, you'll see that it refreshes it right back to the actual amount to pay. So you don't have to worry about changing something on this screen financially that will not refresh back to actual. The other thing you can change on this screen is the due date. If you want to change the due date to a later date, or if just a completely incorrect due date was put in, you can change it here without going back to the original invoice. And in addition, you can change a joint vendor. Sentry Roof Systems displays RAM Tool and Supply as a joint vendor because that was added on the invoice itself. So it displays that here. If you have a joint vendor required on the fly, and most of the time it's for a partial amount, I can simply change my amount to pay to the amount I owe the joint vendor and then add the joint vendor directly on this screen. So if I add my vendor here, I select this invoice to pay for 50,000 out of that 116, I can then print checks by vendor or by control one is by vendor, one is by job. You'll see that it includes both the original and the joint vendor on the check. If I choose to save that, and if it's correct, when I go back into my print invoices checks, you'll see that it has now reduced my dollar amount to the 66000 
You'll also notice that the joint vendor is gone because that was not on the original invoice. I added that on the fly. So when it refreshed the information, it put it right back where it was on the original invoice. So some other helpful quick ways to pay checks is number one, if you are paying out a specific job, you can select just one control number. I can do that either by right clicking on top of the control number I want and say equals, or I can use the filtering and use contains or equals, or I can use the down button at the top of the heading and it will list every one of the control numbers and I can simply just check the one that I want or multiples. So now I'm limited to 52 invoices where I had, I think, 100 or so before. So once I have this in place, I can use my check all. And you'll notice that the creative ceilings that was on hold is not part of that check all. Now, if I wanted to, I could uncheck that hold and select them to pay. And he's treated just like any other invoice. But that hold just allows me to keep them out of the mix if you're having an issue with that particular invoice or that job. And one thing I did uh, not point out to begin with is the invoices I'm seeing on the screen, if I unfilter this, are determined by the due date I have selected at the top. I have 104 invoices available because that is what's due through 3-2. If I select a different due date, it will change the invoices I'm seeing on the screen. So now I'm down to 56 because it's only going to be invoices due through the date I have selected at the top. So that's another way you can control what you see here because a lot of times you're paying invoices. You've got invoices entered way ahead of, of the time period that you're paying. So the use of filtering makes it easier to control what you're printing. Um, you can also utilize the due date. And then when you are printing checks, you have a couple ways to determine how the checks look. If you are printing checks for vendors that work on several different jobs, you can print separate checks by job just by using a by control check print. So for instance, with Austin Plumbing, get rid of those, he is on two separate jobs for me. So instead of selecting one job and printing the check and then selecting the next job, next job and printing the check, I can select all of them and then make sure my format is selected, which you only have to do once. I can then print checks by control, and it automatically separates the checks by job. So here is my $24,000 check for my shops at Park Avenue, and then my next check holds the three invoices for the Chanel Boutique. So it saves you a little bit of time and allows you to be able to process several jobs together, but still separate them out on the check. Another option we have available is an ACH payment. In the vendor file, if your vendor has approved for ACH payment, they will give you their routing and their account number along with a contact person and that contact person's email. So when you're ready to pay them, you would select them. And if they are selected as an ACH vendor, they will have the ACH button selected. So I can go ahead and select those to pay. And instead of using the print checks by vendor or by control, I'm going to use an ACH electronic payment. And it will ask for a voucher number and the date of the payment. 
when I create the ACH, it's going to create a file that I can now upload to the bank. It gives me a listing of the people that I'm paying and the dollar amounts. And it will automatically email and alert that vendor that they are getting paid for this list of invoices. This also tells you where the ACH file is located because that can be different for each client. It tells you the location and it tells you the name of the file. So right now it is sending notifications through my email and my Outlook to each of the individual vendors. A few other helpful hints for this screen is uh, how to handle when you've checked all of these invoices to pay and you're interrupted. Well, you've already balanced this total selected to what you have been authorized to pay, but you can't get to those checks. Instead of coming in through select invoices and print checks, which will refresh the whole screen, including those that you've checked, you can use the select invoices to pay saved checked. What that will do is still update your amount to pay, still update the warnings, but it keeps all of those items that you've checked to pay. So you don't lose that. And that's huge because I know everybody gets interrupted right in the middle of whatever they're doing. Um, a couple other things you can see on here are PDFs and any attachments that you've added. So in Blue John's case right here, it's showing me I have two PDFs attached. Anywhere you have that, I can come up and view the PDF or multiples if they're included. And I can see exactly what is added to that uh, invoice. Also, when you're viewing that, you can see the notes if this invoice was put in through invoices with imaging. Uh, that has a notes and a communication option, and you'll be able to see each user that left a note regarding this invoice. If you should need a copy of a check that was written previously, you can always select a voucher copy. And it's going to ask uh, what bank and if you want to use a check number or if you want to use a check date series. So I can select one or I can select a series and it will bring up the check that was written in a little bit of a different format so it can't be recreated on the form itself and it will list each invoice that was paid along with the distribution on that particular check. Another option we have for paying invoices is the manual payment. There may be a situation where a check was handwritten, you go get a permit, they just grab a blank check, they come back and hand it to you. Check's already done, you don't need the form itself. So instead of going into select invoices and print checks, which you certainly can do and just not print the check out, um, you can use the manual payment. The difference with the manual payment is when I select an invoice to pay and I hit write manual check, I put in my check number, the date of the check, and I simply hit save. It's not going to print out the check form or anything. It's simply assigning a payment to an existing invoice. So that's about it for the select invoices and printing checks option. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to give us a call at 407-834-0700 or you can contact us through support at thepowertools.com.